Hello, everybody. This is Diane. And this is Marnell. And this is take two. Of the Real Housewives of Alaska. Oh, we got to power through this. The, uh, the internet gremlins are strong tonight. Yes, that's a good way to put it. Oh, my yeah. God. So we're hoping that the sound is good. We're hoping that the sound holds out. And here we go. So, Marn, what are we podcasting tonight? Uh, we are podcasting the uh, the theatrical release of ha the play Hamilton. Yeah, so we're podcasting the Disney Plus release of Hamilton. Yeah, yeah. Did it not come to theater for you? I think they had it in no. theaters there. Oh, did they but really? You you have seen it on stage though, right? I actually did get to see it as a stage stage production, yes. I am jealous of that. It was really good. It was a secondary cast. It obviously wasn't the Broadway cast, but it was still really right. good. It was a traveling cast, I would assume. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. Which I actually hear, like, the traveling cast for shows is actually sometimes better because, like, they're more enthusiastic. Um, just they're in a new place every week and like new people and you know it's it's fun to travel and so yeah i hear the i hear the traveling crew is is pretty fun you know it was a really good production it certainly wasn't lin-manuel miranda but it was a good production so right. i uh, i'm i'm glad that we spent the money juno got chicago so I went and saw uh, that. Yeah. Okay. Which yeah. I have never seen, actually. So. Like you've never seen, like even the movie. No. Future podcast episode. <laughs> <laughs> what you're getting me back for the musical? You picked it. <laughs> I did. Can you believe that I picked this? No, I was kind of surprised. Um, so kind of our, our choices were like Civil War, uh, Hamilton, and then a um, documentary, documentary about Andrew Tate, which we still may do, um, just because he's a horrendous person and you must know about him. <laughs> he sounds like it. They talked about him a little bit on, I want to say, the Bulwark podcast that I've been listening to. And uh, yeah, he sounds pretty horrific. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this was not as horrific as I initially complained about. Um, <laughs> Yay! I know. I was, I was the one that suggested this because it was like, you know, politically relevant. Uh, but And you know I love it. Yes, you love it. And so if you hear, I have an extra dog. So if you hear extra dogs, it's me. Um, so... I started watching it and I did not realize that it was like a musical that sings all of the lines. Like, <laughs> yeah. um, that's what most musicals are, actually. <laughs> not really. Not in my experience. Chicago isn't. Um, but yeah, uh, so not not my favorite, but um, definitely improved in the second act and upon the rewatch. That's so interesting because I actually feel like the first act is um, faster and more engaging than the second act. Huh. But I, I, I liked the, the first act and, of course, the second act, but I liked the first act more on the rewatch. Like, I don't know why I just couldn't get into it. Maybe I was just hung up on the whole musical sings all of the lines <laughs> oh my god all they're doing is singing <laughs> it's really hard for me to focus like it's hard for me and like there's a lot going on and i even lin manuel says that like you know they like it is something where there is a ton of stuff going on stage at all times so um yeah and you have to understand so i have watched the disney production now twice <laughs> I saw it in the theaters and I listened to the musical version ad nauseum in 2020 so, and 2021. So how does that work? Is it just the main check? Cause like they sing all the way through. You're not listening to two and a half hours of singing. Are you? It's just oh, yeah, the, you, the, 
are. Really? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I thought it was just going to be the big songs like I'm not throwing away my shot or burn or, you know, not like the entire dialogue. It's the whole story. Oh, my God. <laughs> you lost me on that one. That's crazy. That's really funny. No, the soundtrack is the entire soundtrack. So you must have this movie committed to memory then. I wouldn't say I have it committed to memory, but I can sing along with every song. That's crazy. Yeah. It does have some very iconic songs, though, so I will give you it that. It definitely yeah. does. Yeah. So go yeah. ahead and give me your rating then, and I'll give you mine. So. I know like yours I, isn't going to be as high as mine is, so it's okay. Your, mine is not going to be as high, but mine is definitely not as low as it was at the beginning of the week. Or even yesterday, because I have to admit, I did finish my rewatch like 10 minutes before we started. <laughs> and then it took um, us like 20 minutes to get the audio up and running. <laughs> yes. Hopefully it stays up and running. Um, so I gave it a 7.2 Bastard Orphaned Sons of Horrors. Very good. Iconic line. I gave it a 9.97 .9 out of 10 burnt love letters and duels fought. Oof. Men in their pride. <laughs> Hu and men in their hubris, right? Their hu yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I, I guess they didn't have cable back then, so. <laughs> you, gotta do, you gotta do something to entertain yourself. Screw each other and off each other. That's there you what go. We do without cable. It's we kind of do a version of that with cable, actually. <laughs> Social media, yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah. Well, so just a little bit about Hamilton. <laughs> it premiered in uh, January of 2015 in the Public Theater in New York, and it quickly went to Broadway. It went to Broadway in 2015 as well. Um, it has won numerous awards, but it won three Tonys, a Grammy, and the Pulitzer Prize for Drama. Wow. Which I thought was super cool. So Lin-Manuel Miranda is a Pulitzer Prize winner. Not shocking. Not like, shocking at all. He's a really talented guy. I like, I, I, I did, aside from the whole musical thing, I watched this in awe of like, uh, there is there's something really difficult already about having to write about true events and make it entertaining, then put it on a stage for two and a half hours. Oh, and guess what? We're going to be singing the entire time. Like, I, I'm just, I am in awe about that. So what's really crazy is I watched a thing that they have on Disney that's a reunion of the cast in 2020 when they released this on to Disney. Cause they, this mm -hmm. is actually a recording of the play that was done in 2016 mm -hmm. and Robin Roberts, who I think she is a news host for CBS. She may be with NBC. I don't know. I don't know the big networks anymore. Um, She's a three letter anchor. <laughs> she is exactly. So she interviewed several members of the main cast, including Lynn Manuel Miranda, of course. And he said that he read the book that was the source material, which is a book by a guy named Ron Chernow. The book is called Alexander Hamilton. Um, mm -hmm. And by the second chapter, he could hear it as music in his head. That is a certain kind of genius. Yeah. Like and I have got to tell you, it's a special kind of genius because I thought, oh, I'm really lame. I have had a sample of this book on my Kindle for quite a while, so I should probably go back and try to read it. And I am part way through chapter one, and I cannot hear it as music in my head. <laughs> I, I have about four books started um, and unfinished. The one I'm listening to right now is one that you actually recommend. Um, Everything Trump touches die. <laughs> oh, with Rick Wilson. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, he needs to update it. Like, I would love to hear his his take. Um, I think it was written in 2018 or 2019. I would love to hear 
he you has know. a second book that he wrote before <laughs> Trump ran a second time called Running Running Against the Devil. That's right. Yeah. Yep. But nothing up to date other than the stuff that he's been doing with the Lincoln Project and and his he's pretty active on threads on social media. Dude just needs a podcast. <laughs> he, I mean, well, we've all got one. He actually po podcasts with Molly Jong Fast. Oh. So. Huh. I will have to. He'll, that he up. shows up on Fast Politics every now and then. Yeah. Anyway, back to Hamilton, because you know we're going to talk politics, because this is political. Of course. Um, so just a little tiny bit about Lin-Manuel Miranda, who obviously was the composer and the lead actor. So in his IMDb, he's got 41 actor credits, 12 composer credits, and 13 music department credits. But here's the kind of cool stuff. He's got tons of small, uncredited roles. Like he has a little tiny role in the last episode of Star Wars, episode nine, The Rise of Skywalker. He's an uncredited huh. soldier. It, it makes you wonder if he's just like, yeah, like when you get a call from Lucasfilms, you answer it. Like, Oh, totally. He was like, I'm yeah. Lin-Manuel Miranda and I'd like to play a soldier in your movie. Could I please? Right. And they were like, right. of course. That reminds me of um, Trey Parker and Matt Stone from South Park when um, whenever some big celebrities request to be on South Park, they always make them like like Jerry Seinfeld was so appalled that uh, they wanted to make him turkey number four. Oh, my and, God. Like, that's hilarious. He was just going to be like, gobble, gobble. And it's like Jerry Seinfeld's like, do you know who I am? You know, <laughs> like and um, George Clooney is one of the kids's dogs. So George Clooney just barks through the entire episode. Like, so <laughs> I love it when, when the, you know, like I, I love it when people have a sense of humor like that. And then I love Lynn Manuel's uh, like sense of humor of like, I don't need to be the star. I can be like the voice of droid number four. You know? Right. Totally. Yeah. Soldier number two. So I don't know a lot of his other stuff. I'll be really honest with you. I, I recognized some of it, like I, I heard about when In the Heights was coming out. I have not seen it. I've not watched it. Um, I never watched Encanto, Disney's Encanto, but he was a composer either. for that. He composed some of the songs for Moana. Um, he composed some new songs for the 20, 2023 production of Little Mermaid. Oh, so he's done tons of stuff. The only other thing I'm embarrassed to say that I've seen him in, and I'm, I'm embarrassed to say I've only seen him in one other thing just because I'm such a huge Hamilton fan. He was in Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Have you seen that? Yes. Who was he? He, he played Hermes, the messenger god. Huh. Kind of makes me to go back and rewatch it. The series, not the movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, the huh. new series that just came out. Interesting. I think we're both going to have dogs participating tonight because Koba is sitting over here whining at me. <laughs> so. Can't hear it. That's good. <laughs> um, so when I looked at his filmography, the first thing that came up for me was mm -hmm. WWE Smackdown. He yes. was an audience member. <laughs> me too. Me too. <gasps> oh, that's funny. I, so, I love that audience members get, get credited. Right? I guess it's when it's somebody like Lin-Manuel Miranda they're going to, right? Right. <laughs> um, then I found out a little bit about Thomas Kale, who was the director of this particular production. Um, he, again, was someone that I had not heard of or had not seen much of much of the other I haven't seen any of the other stuff that he's done actually so I recognized two broke girls he was a director for that you're smiling have you watched it I have not watched it it's it's been on the list for a while um but yeah I haven't watched it I I see clips all the time all right and then he directed an Oprah special, which, of course, everybody knows who Oprah is. <laughs> um, he was a producer-director on Grease Live. 
So I'm assuming that was a live production of Grease that was shown on, on a television station. He was a producer, director, writer on Fosse Verdon, which is, I, I know that Fosse was a famous dancer. That's about all I know about that. I'm showing how uncultured I am right now. Um, and I overall, only know that because of Birdcage. Right? Same. <laughs> Same. So we're both showing how uncultured we are. <laughs> or incredibly cultured because Birdcage is a wonderful movie. That is true. That is very true. It would be fun to watch that and see if it's held up. I bet it has. It has. It totally has. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so Thomas Kale overall has 12 producer credits, 10 director credits, and two writer credits. <clears throat> And that's what I've got for the writer, director, producer. Um, I am going to be shameless right now and open up IMDb because I didn't write anything down about Jonathan Groff after we talked about him. So I have plenty to say about Jonathan Groff. So okay, first of go all, ahead and start. I apologize for choosing like the only white guy <laughs> in the cast of the all of the characters like the, there are so many great characters in this movie that we could have done but the reason why i did jonathan groff is because i love netflix's mind hunter and um that for me that is the movie that put him on the map um other things that he has been in that a lot of people know him from is he is Kristoff in frozen he's the voice of Kristoff. Um, and you know him from Glee. Yes. Um, where he plays you know, kind of a bad guy. <laughs> did you know that he's got a re he's got like a really big scar on his bicep from Glee? No. What happened? Um, they were doing a number and one of the female cast members caught him on the arm with her stiletto <gasps> and like rip ripped a big hole in his bicep. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> yeah, like of all of the roles he has played, like Glee was the dangerous one. Oh my god, that's so funny. Um, there's also an HBO comedy drama called Looking, um, that I have not watched, uh, but uh it it looks okay. Um but yeah, I think that's kind of mostly what a lot of people know him for. He's got plenty of other acting credits. But the thing that I have found so interesting about him is uh, he just won a Tony Award at the 70, 77th Annual Tonys. Um, he does a lot of stage acting. Um, so his Tony Award was for um, Merrily We Roll Along. Uh, and <laughs> I have this giant thing that I wrote from his speech. Um, I saw his acceptance speech for the Tonys on TikTok and it was so touching. So first of all, you have to realize that he grew up in Amish country. He grew up oh, how in interesting. Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, he is gay and his father was Mennonite. His mother was Methodist and um, that is how he was raised. And in his acceptance speech, he wrote, he said, <clears throat> I grew up in a house surrounded by cornfields in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I was raised by my parents, Jim and Julie Groff and my brother, David, and they were in the audience. Um, Thank you for letting me dress like Mary Poppins when I was three. Thank you for letting me act out scenes from I Love Lucy on my 10th birthday. Thank you for always allowing my freak flag to fly without ever making me feel weird about it. Even if they didn't always understand me, my family knows the life-saving power of fanning the flames of a young person's passion without judgment. I walked through life with an open heart because you let me know that I could. Thank you. I love you. He, there was like, that was only like the first third of the speech, but like, that was like the most poignant thing in the speech. And like, to, to know that his family had to be just so conservative and they had this little boy who, uh, 
like acted uh, as Dorothy. He put on stage plays in their barn and he was Dorothy from Wizard of Oz. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Famous gay icon, you know? And he, he it, it just must have been so hard for him in life. But his family was always so accepting of him that he is who he is now. And I think that's amazing. And I love that he pointed out that it was it was life saving for him. Yeah. You know, and and he was that way from a a young age. You know, he was um, dressing as Mary Poppins at three years old, you know. So I just that that is just so amazing to me that his family, you know, like. And, and I'm so happy that they were in the audience when he won his Tony Award. So uh, I thought that was super cool. Um, yeah, I actually, I didn't have too much more about him other than that. Um, just because he, like, that just to me was was so touching to me. Um one of the things he he only has um i think it's four scenes in hamilton and they're roughly like maybe nine minutes long each um so he has less than 40 minutes of screen time or stage time in the two and a half hours um so what does he do <laughs> when he's hanging out backstage not being on stage he gets the privilege of meeting the fans of the show from all walks of life, such as Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, Dick Cheney, Paul McCarthy, Jennifer Lopez, Lupita Nyong, Buster Rhymes, Weird Al Yankovic, and Common. Like, he That's just gets to hang cool. out with celebrities backstage uh, while he's not being the funniest character in the show. Like, uh, like I... I can't believe he's still not doing it, like not doing it still. Like he, he's no longer doing the stage acting for the cast. He's he's moved on, which, you know, is great for him. But like, just what a cool experience. Yeah, um, that reminds me. And I have to tell you this before I lose my train of thought about it. So I was asking Rob what the style of um, of rapping that Hamilton does is called. And he said it's called spitting. And mm -hmm. it's based on Eminem. Mm -hmm. And Lin Manuel Miranda chose that because he wanted people to know how intelligent Hamilton was, which I think mm -hmm. is a real commentary on how he feels about Eminem and his music. Um, Mulligan, Hercules Mulligan, is based on Busta Rhymes. And oh, wow. um, George Washington's character is based on a combination of Common and John Legend. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I did hear that the um, the song You'll Be Back uh, is he, uh, he was talking, Lin-Manuel was talking to his very good friend, Hugh Laurie. Uh, oh, from House. excellent. Yes. And he was like kind of figuring out, trying to figure out like, what would King George the Third say? Like, you know, like what would what would his feelings be in in like the private moments or whatever? And Hugh Laurie wagged his finger at him and said, "You'll be back." And Lin Manuel was like, "That's it." Like, and and so thus the the famous. That's how that number was born. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. It's so catchy. Like I see it all all the time on TikTok. Like. You can sing the words to the entire thing, but I can sing all of the words to King You'll George's. be back. Yeah, like, <laughs> I love it. He's just so sassy on stage. Like that's that's why I picked him. Is like I just and what's funny is um, I missed it the first time around when I talked to you and I was like, I, you know, I'm an hour in and I'm waiting for this scene and you're like, uh, that was a while ago. You're right. Yeah. It's like in the first fifteen minutes, I missed it completely. In my defense, I have that staying with me. So, um, he's Poor three years guy. old. He's three years old, and he's ninety pounds. And my husky doesn't like him <laughs> <laughs> because he's three years old and he weighs ninety pounds. That's why Dexter yeah. doesn't like him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thankfully, I have a king bed because I have about two hundred and fifty pounds of dog in my bed at any one time. 
I've got about 50 pounds of dog in my bed when they're both <laughs> in there. And that's, that's enough. <laughs> one's like you'd hear me three say that. pounds. One's like three pounds. The other one's just like a super chunk. <laughs> right. That's well, crazy. anything else about Jonathan Groff? Uh, no, not really. Uh, I, I think we'll talk about his character a little, but uh, yeah. The only thing that I would add is that I, I recognize a couple of things that he was in. I mean, obviously, I recognize Frozen, although never seen it, um, or Frozen 2, because I don't have kids. Oh, his next movie that he's coming out with? Frozen 3. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> I went and saw Despicable Me 4. Oh. The one with the minions. Mm -hmm. That's Despicable Me, right? Yeah. 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 I hadn't seen 1, 2, and 3, but I went and saw 4 with the husband and the stepkids the other night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think I've seen 3 either. Um, not a big in theater kids movie fan um there there was one recently where i, I wanted to see it and i was like now nah, wait for streaming okay i'm totally opening the door to let the dogs out that is how we how low we've sunk in our podcasting <laughs> lives right now because they are just having a fit and i don't know why please go and don't come back at least not for a <laughs> while <laughs> good god I'm not wagging my finger at them saying you'll be back. <laughs> um, well, on sort of on that note, do we have any housekeeping? Housewives housekeeping? I do not. I have a little bit and it's kind of whiny. I threw my back out two weeks ago and it's still a mess. Oh. So if I am fidgeting a lot and shifting a lot, it's just because my back is really not happy right now. So sitting in a chair is, blah. it's probably why I sound tired too, because I just, I'm still dealing with this hor horrible back thing. Oh yeah. And since the last time we talked, I got married and we oh, saw yeah, each other. That. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's I those know. small things Ronell was in my wedding if you hadn't have like been getting married and like had other things on your mind we like could have podcasted together but in the same room in the but same I kind of had other stuff going on yeah just a little bit just we a were little. Uh, steaming groomsmen shirts <laughs> I still have the steamer oh my gosh <laughs> literally have it right there that's hilarious because that's where chuck left it i bought a green one <laughs> <laughs> I, like I, I forget who i was talking to the other day but like because i brought an enormous bag for like a four-day trip to to your house because i brought like my entire like dyson setup my dyson air wrap setup like my all my makeup like i didn't decant anything like i had my big bottles of everything I brought a steamer and thank God I did because like everybody needed to use it. And, and you so know what? Somebody, oh, go ahead. I was telling somebody the other day that they were like, you brought a steamer with you to like for a four day trip in Anchorage. And I'm like, I mean, it was the most used item and I left it there. And now my sister has a steamer. <laughs> and the funny thing is, I said, I'm sure as soon as this is all over, I will find my iron. I found my iron a couple of nights ago. <laughs> <laughs> god it's amazing the shit we accumulate over time oh my god rob was saying yeah. that if we ever do consolidate households that that we'll have to both massively purge which is very true you like like that may need to be the the time i take off like i take a week off and come a marie condo yeah I don't know. I think I need Marie Kondo 1.0 and 2.0. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funny. Um, so I am currently looking for a place to buy also. Um, and I met with a realtor about two weeks ago. And uh, like I look at all of these houses online and I've, I've been looking for a while. So I've seen a ton come and go because the market is just on fire here. Um, and 
so uh, I, I always try and like imagine myself in the space. I get I get pretty connected to some houses and then I log on the next day and it says pending sale and I get disappointed all over again. So that's super fun. But um, my um, my realtor asked me, she's like, is there anywhere in town that you don't want to live? Because like we have like Douglas Island. A lot of people don't like to live there because they think it doesn't get a lot of sun. And, you know, you've got Lemon Creek, which like like there's great neighborhoods in Lemon Creek. And then like we have like way out towards the end of the road at T Harbor and then the other end of the road thing. Like, do you not want to live some, you know, in any, any of those places? I was like, you know, for the right property, I would pretty much live anywhere. Um, so no, nothing's off the table. <clears throat> and then I, I don't know if people have seen it in the national news. It, it, we did make a couple of blips, but we have a yoga log, um, at our glacier and it, is a basin that has a frozen dam every year and the this basin fills up with you know melted snow and rainwater and everything and it releases and last year everyone saw a bunch of houses collapse into the river and this year they would have seen a ton of flooding um hit the neighborhoods and so on monday i was texting my realtor and i was like i would like to revise my statement about where i do and don't want to live i was like i don't want to live anywhere west of this street <laughs> because that's where all the flooding happened and so I, I get a lot of people who you know i live in juno juno just flooded i was nowhere near the flooding thank god like my house was nowhere near being touched but we did have a lot of people who um, I would say they were displaced, but you know, everybody has gone back into their home and ripped out all their carpet and razored their drywall up two feet and pulled out all their, uh, their, uh, uh, the fiberglass stuff. Insulation. I was going to um, say, you've got me the fiberglass <laughs> stuff. The, the insulation in their houses and are, are we're drying out. So, um, but yeah, I, uh, I'm, I have revised where I do and don't want to live in town because of that. So, but yeah, I, I can't wait to move into my own place and like start setting up how I want it. <sighs> I think I finally found someone to repair my ceiling. <laughs> and then I think I'm going to paint after that's all done. Like really paint, including finishing the area that needed to be repainted that you saw. Adventures in homeownership. Oh my God. Never, I'm so ends. tired of it. <laughs> I'm tired of it like, already. I completely understand why people buy condominiums. Like I always used to be like, God, no, why would anyone buy a condominium? Because like, you don't really own your house, you know, um, you can't like, you know, paint the outside any color. And sometimes they have restrictions that like your curtains have to be a certain shade of color or whatever. Um, you can only have like two cars and like, why would you? And I've been, since my, my search for a house, I, I kind of have to eliminate a lot of the condos around here because there's um, size restrictions and the number of pets restrictions. And, uh, you know, I have two large dogs, sometimes three. Um, and, uh, but when it comes to like having to fix crap and take care of like the lawn and the snow removal, I'm like, okay. I'll pay a couple extra hundred bucks a month if somebody does that for me. Like, yeah. Yeah. I completely understand. Like, especially as, as our bodies are getting old and we throw out our back and we still have lawns to mow. It's like. I legit have not vacuumed my stairs in weeks because of my back. So. See, J.D. Vance is right. As miserable old cat lady. <laughs> <laughs> although we're dog ladies but yeah well but now now it's the postmenopausal posse that's coming after him yep you've yep. seen that on social thing, media today the only thing that we are good for is taking care of our grandchildren yes i mean i would have had to have had children first so i mean that's completely out of the question at this point so 
it's not entirely I, out of the question for me now because I have stepchildren, but it's a ways off. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. So I have a lot of living to do before I'm taking care of grandchildren. <laughs> yeah. No. No, thanks. That brings us to the news. <laughs> so a little bit of news has happened since the last time we podcasted as well. Oh, really? Like what? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Like the complete recovery of hope and joy in America. I literally went from like, I was packing my bag after your wedding, after he was shot in the ear. And I was like, this is it. Like, it's, it's like, I was, I was in tears because I was like, this is going to be the handsome handmaid's tale from now on. Like, and I don't mean like, we all joke about like, oh, haha, ha, you know, I'm not going to be a Martha. I'm too mouthy for that. I'm going to get sent to the colonies. Um, I mean that like, they're going to roll back our rights to the point that like, I'm looking at buying a house. I may not be, be able to own property by this time next year. You know, like, should I be putting my money into buying a house right now? Or should I be renewing my passport so I can get the fuck out? You know, and I then think you should have both contingency plans, right? And then it the other news was announced. And I was like, Okay, I think we can do this. So I was listening to a little older episode of a podcast with a guy named Tim Miller, who he is on the Bulwark podcast and he is a never Trumper Republican. And uh, I can't remember the name of the podcast right now, but uh, the other podcast that he's on, but they were talking about, it was Monday morning quarterbacking about why Josh Shapiro didn't get, or not Josh, yeah, mm. Josh Shapiro yeah, didn't Josh get chosen. Shapiro. Yeah. And, yeah. um, not to be confused with Ben Shapiro, a <laughs> totally different guy. Right. Who makes all vaginas dry up immediately. <laughs> <laughs> um, ben, not Josh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's, it's, it was funny listening to that because you, within 24 hours of Tim Walls being on the ticket... It's just been revolutionary ever since. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I kind of want to say, like, he's everybody's peepaw, you know, but he's only 60. Like, right. He just, like, I feel like he just looks like everybody's peepaw um, because he's only a year older than Harris. Right. So, yeah. He's six years um, older than me. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, it is so strange as a Gen X person to have a presidential and vice presidential ticket that could not be my parents. Like that are not old enough to be my parents. Like what? That Like, I don't think that's ever happened in my life. Like if they had started super, 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 super young, maybe. Oh yeah. But yeah. super young. But like, it's just, it's, it's so nice to have, people in office who are making potentially people in office who are making laws that they will live to, to either benefit from or suffer from. So they've, they've got a ra uh, horse in the race. So girl, I got to tell you, I wore my pearls and chucks to the office today. <laughs> <laughs> my chucks came in the mail last night. We got the email that was like, just a reminder, as a state employee, please don't oh. do anything political in the office or talk politics or yes. no working on campaigns while you're on state time or, you know, like, don't. Yeah. So, Rob got but, the same email yesterday. Um, I bought a hoodie and a T-shirt and they are um, they have the Mattel logo and they are in the Barbie font and it says Madam President. I love it. I'm still waiting oh. for a t-shirt. It says, I understand the assignment. <laughs> I Currently, I'm wearing my Capes and Lunatics merch. Yay. I should Yay. have gotten out my Capes and Lunatics merch, but like I told Marn, I changed right into my PJs when I got home <laughs> and after I'd gotten the garbage out. So here we are. 
my PJs are literally right here. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoop, <laughs> and just change into this shirt because it will go my pjs will go right back on after this this is not right my pjs on. i do i do wear this outside of the house phil i as as do i i've worn both my sweatshirt and my t-shirt thank you to, to my sister for getting them for me you're welcome so diane well, got uh, capes and lunatics merch for her wedding <laughs> <laughs> and a sister who was my maid of honor so yes. it was a great wedding it was a pretty great wedding i agree yeah yep well anything else you want to say about the news other than hallelujah and vote 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 no other than like like i've, I've gone from utter hopelessness to like feeling like it is what was it 2012? 2008 was the first time Barack Obama was Obama. elected. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I feel like it's 2008 all over again. And I really hope uh, on the 6th of November that we are all dancing in the streets again. Right. I have some Hillary PTSD. I do. Yeah. Yep. It's why, like, it's funny. I... I've tried to stop calling her um, Kamala and start calling her Harris because oh. calling calling women politicians by their first names is casual casual misogyny. Oh, um, how interesting! It, what an interesting yeah. take. Um, it, it it basically sort of infantilizes that because we don't do that to anybody else. We don't, you know, we don't call. Obama, Barack all the time. We don't go around calling Trump Donald, you know, like, so why do we do it to women? You, people did have the plausible excuse with Hillary that like, you didn't want to uh, confuse Clinton with Clinton. Sure. Um, but when you are, it, it, you exist in the context. <laughs> as, as Harris would say, you exist in the context. If you, you didn't were fall out of the coconut tree. <laughs> <laughs> If you are talking about the person running for president right now, and that person happens to be Hillary Clinton, you're not going to confuse that person with Bill. Like, so you can say Clinton. So like, just try, try to treat everyone equally. Interesting. That's a very interesting take. All right. I'm going to disrupt us one more time before we get to our goods, bads, and uglies because, oh, here she comes. I was going to say the other dog has disappeared, but now she is standing at the door going, maybe I want You'll to come be in back. after all. <laughs> Soon you see. <laughs> see, now they can't understand why I'm not going into the kitchen, getting, kitchen and getting them a treat. So... <laughs> They'll just have to wait. All right. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first with my good? Um, I went first with my rating. So do, do you want me to go first with my good? Sure. Um, so my good is we kind of talked about this a little earlier. I had a hard time keeping my trap shut. Um, like this makes me want to learn so much more about all of the people that were involved. Like this, this gives people interest in history. Like to, just the way that it was presented, it was like, it was modern, it was relatable and it humanized a lot of people in this. And sometimes we forget that these people like, you know, had real lives and real problems and, you know, like a, lo a lot of these people literally fought and nearly died for, you know, the founding of our country. And yet they were so flawed and had affairs. And, you know, uh, it, I, so like, I, I have done so much research around all of the characters in this, uh, in this movie that I, I would not have done before. And it's, it's, kind of important because they don't really teach you a lot of this stuff in in social studies or civics or anything like that they don't go oh, into heavens depth no. that this went into um but 
like it's it's so funny how all of these people were kind of related so 32 years after aaron burr killed alexander hamilton in a duel burr's wife left him her divorce attorney was alexander hamilton jr really <laughs> yes um like oh he must have and, taken great joy in that right um and so I, I don't know if you if you notice or if anybody noticed um there were actually three Skylar sisters in the beginning and then you don't see Peggy um much anymore after that first number um and it's because she actually died at the age of 42 uh and she was a super interesting character and I think one of my next reads is going to be a book called Hamilton and Peggy a Rev revolutionary friendship and it's a YA book. It's a young adult book, but oh. it goes into kind of her story because, um, God, what was the uh, Roosevelt sister that was just like, she, she couldn't be controlled, you know, like they, they Alice, put her in a mix. it was the daughter, yeah. wasn't it? Okay. I yeah. thought she was a daughter, but maybe. Yeah. Uh, it just, this is Peggy sounds this way where she, it was supposedly like super witty because apparently, allegedly, Hamilton had an affair with all three Skylar sisters at one point. Really? Because all of his writings were burned by his wife after his death, we will never truly know. But the things that did survive suggest that um, he he got around. <laughs> Um, well, Martha Washington named her feral tomcat after him. It's I mean, true. <laughs> <laughs> well, and um, so, oh, God, what was the guy that was shot? Aaron, Aaron Burr's, no, not Aaron Burr's son. Uh, what was his name? Are you thinking about Philip? Uh, Lawrence? Lo oh, um, so Lawrence is the guy who was played, he he is the the actor was the same actor who played the son Philip. Philip okay. was shot in a duel. Lawrence was killed a few days after after the war was over as as the force British forces were retreating. So of course we only know these people from what they wrote and what was written about them. The letters between Lawrence and Hamilton were very affectionate and so uh yes and there was a third person there was a third man involved in this where um one of the sons liked to call him call them the gay trio now of course back then gay meant something completely different um but they were very affectionate in their writing and uh, like you can look back on that and you can look at that and say well, men just were more affectionate with each other, you know, like they they bonded in a different way. Like, you know, brothers in battle would tell them, tell other men that they loved them, you know, and you, you just you don't see a lot of that anymore because, you know, so much toxic masculinity. Um, so it's speculated that Hamilton had, and a few of his male friends were together, but um, it is also speculated that he was with all three Skylar sisters. Um, and Peggy just sounds like a hoot. Um, so uh, she was the talk of the town. There was nothing really left for her from her own handwriting, but people talked about her often. They called her wicked wit and she was endowed with a superior mind and a rare accuracy in the judgment of men and things. In 1783, Peggy, then 25, married her distant cousin, Stephen Van Resmuller, at 19. Uh, it was quite a match. Stephen owned, Stephen or Stephen, owned one fortieth of the entire land in New York. He is ranked, he is still ranked as one of the richest Americans ever. Huh. Um, 
he went on to found the Renessler Polytech Institute. The couple had three children, only one of them lived to adulthood. Sadly, unlike her sisters, Eliza, who lived to 97, Peggy died at 42. Um, so I don't know. May, I didn't maybe have a soft spot for her because she was the youngest and she had a wicked wit. And like, so like, I loved that this movie made me want to learn all about these people and their lives because it was it was it's so interesting it's far more interesting than a kardashian <laughs> <laughs> that so, is so true that was my good was like i just love that this was such a, like a great telling of the story that i wanted to immerse myself in the rest of it very good so what was your good well i had two and the first was that, like any great musical, there was a repetition of themes throughout the music, which I loved. Um, just sometimes little lines that would come back, like the line where Burr says to Hamilton, talk less, smile more. Mm -hmm. It comes back later on where Hamilton is talking to Burr and he's like, you know, I'm, I should take you at your own advice. Talk less, smile more. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not throwing away my shot comes back repeatedly. Death doesn't discriminate. Love doesn't discriminate. Those are themes that come back repeatedly. Why do you write like you're running out of time? I just, I love the, the way that the themes are cycled again and again throughout. Yeah. It, I love how it was threaded into the story all along. Mm -hmm. Um, and it just fit in so many different places. That's why I was like, it, like, he's a genius for writing this. Like, there, there is some sort of genius there that I, I could never even fathom how his mind works to put this real life story on stage and then make it lyrical. It's amazing. Um, there was, I should have screenshotted it. Um, there was a line that Hamilton and Burr said to each other like twice. Um, and it is actually taken from letters they exchanged. Um, and of course I now cannot find it. Um, Darn it. So that interview that I was talking about that Robin Roberts did with the cast, she mm -hmm. also had an, an historian in the group that she interviewed as well. And the lady was saying how fascinating it was to hear language from the documents that she had read come back Maybe. as lyrics in this musical. So, And this is such... A departure from the style of music that is normally used for musicals to have it right. be the the words from these letters from you know the 1800s like yeah that's yeah. pretty cool um so, oh go ahead oh no go ahead i was just gonna say my other good was the repurposing of cast members so um Davy Diggs played both Lafayette and Jefferson. Mm -hmm. Which um, both of those I could not take seriously and I love him for that. <laughs> yes. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce his name, but the guy who played Hercules Mulligan Mulligan also played James Madison. Um so he is from um Nigeria and his name is um, Okarieti Ono Duwadawan. I'm impressed. And he goes by Oak. I'm very impressed that you got that out. <laughs> and then as we said, the guy who played Lawrence also played the the Hamilton son Philip, who was killed in, mm -hmm. in a duel. Yeah. And then the young woman who played Peggy also played Mar Mariah Reynolds, the woman that Hamilton was was known to have a very scandalous affair with. And I thought 
like I said earlier, he's only got about 40 minutes of stage time, but I thought every once in a while I saw Jonathan Groff singing in, or uh, dancing as one of the backup dancers in like the all white suit, you know. Oh, wouldn't that be great? I, yeah, I swear to God he was threaded in there every once in a while. That would be pretty great. Yeah. So that was my good. Ah. Uh. So, my bad. And we kind of already talked about it. Um, I do not like the style of musical. Um, it, it is, it, for some reason, it, it's chaotic for my brain. Um, and I, there are very few music musicals that sing the entire way through that I can sit through. I could not sit through Les Mis. Um, I could sit through Sweeney Todd, though. Um, but also, it's easier to watch it live. So I was trying to watch Les Mis on TV. Then that's why I think I was like, initially, I was I was like, oh, my God, what did I do to us watching it? <laughs> you just love it so much that I was like, I, I, I have to get through this. But I, like, it's really hard to watch on TV. It's a little easier watching in, the, in uh, on stage. Um, but yeah not my preferred style of musical so uh i i was really surprised that i i started to like it more through the second act and then on the rewatch it, i mean and other than it being two and a half hours like i would i i would watch it again like if if i was with somebody who was like oh i've never seen it i'd be like oh you should see it and i would watch it with them uh so yeah uh, other than it be it my bad was that it it's not my preferred style of musical. So it was two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't feel like it's two and a half hours of your life you'll never get back. No, 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 not at all. Um, and honestly, I, like I said, I the second act was much better for me. So like it really, like for some reason, the first hour was really hard for me. The second time I watched it, it wasn't as hard. Um, I think maybe because I knew like there were better things coming and I also paid a little bit more attention um, and saw uh, King George, the scene that I wanted to see. And then, <laughs> um, there was a couple of, of songs that I was like, oh, okay, like, all right. Which so by the way, not oh, throwing away my shot, just so you know, um there's a really great parody of it which was done right around the time that the covid vaccine came out and it's performed by a bunch of healthcare providers who say who say that they're not throwing away their shot that's right i do remember that i don't know if yeah. i sent that to you or you sent that to me it was really good i still remember yeah. that yeah well, that's so funny because your bad leads right into mine, which we also already talked about, which for me, the second half was slower. <laughs> and I'm not sure why. Um, I don't know if it's just because it didn't have the excitement of the Revolutionary War. It didn't have my two favorite characters, Washington and Hercules Mulligan. <laughs> it did too. He didn't, oh, yeah, he I guess it, he was in the bar. Yeah, yes, it did. OK, yeah, he was in the bar and he, he was in the war. Yeah, no, not but by, in the second. Well, I oh, think this, of the second right. act as as you're after right. the intermission. Yeah. OK, yeah, you're no, you're right. I'm Washington may time. have been in it because there may have been some cabinet related things. Yes, yeah. but uh, yeah. But it just didn't yeah. have that excitement that the Revolutionary War had for me. So there were things that I did notice about him in in the first half that when I rewatched it, there is this adorable scene when uh, they're doing the wedding uh -huh. um, and uh, Hercules, he didn't get to walk anybody down the aisle, but like he oh, does this yes. like, little thing at the end. And well, he's, and he's like, the like, flower he's girl. Down. That's right. That's right. And he like sticks out his tongue. Like it was just so adorable. Yeah. I love him so much. Yes, he's a great character. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing that was my bad, and this is on me, is that I wish I knew the history better. 
Yeah. So that's that's going to make me try to slog through the foundational material for this, which is the book by Ron Chernow. And I mean, I hate to I hate to pick on a historian who wrote a book, but damn, it's dry. <laughs> Audiobook. I, I yeah, definitely my problem is I never get through them. I never get through them. I fall asleep. So there, there are some times where um, I can like some of my work at work is mindless enough, and I, I know you don't have maybe when you're charting. I don't know. No, like, probably I don't not have that luxury. Yeah, no, like some a lot of times mine is like you know pulling data and formatting spreadsheets and and like yeah. So I, I have the luxury of being able to do that uh, sometimes when I'm working, listening to podcasts, um, and then mowing the lawn or taking the dogs for a walk i can listen to podcasts or, or audiobooks so i feel like i have a lot more time to listen um i my attention span just i i have the hardest time unless i am super engrossed in a book and i think this is one of the reasons why i had a hard time in act one is because i have a hard time like with character establishment like you're giving me you're introducing me to everybody and you're giving me all their backstory and how they all connect to each other and blah 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 and i just like i i can't hold that much in my brain all of the time um i it's why i couldn't get into game of thrones in book form and that's why i couldn't get into girl with a dragon tattoo in book form is because there is so much establishment that um, I have to, like, it has to be on the screen. I can't. Like, books it can expand upon things way more than movies and television can. And so it's just, they condense it in a much better format on TV. And so, uh, yeah, I, that's probably why I had a hard time with uh, the first half. Interesting. Yeah. But by the second half, you knew everybody well enough that you were willing to stick it out. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, and on the second watch, like I, I, like the characters who, who switched from one person to another, like Lafayette, um, yeah. to John Adams, uh, or no, I, to, uh, to Jefferson, Jefferson. Yes. Yeah. Uh, like <laughs> I, I didn't catch that first watch. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> I was not paying close enough attention. You were like, what the heck's like, going on with Lafayette? Why is he being all weird all of a sudden? <laughs> yeah. Like, where did this French accent go? <laughs> <laughs> but he still had that swagger, and as as um, as as Jefferson, Adam, as Jefferson, yeah. um, so they toasted John Adams in the bar, and I think that's why I keep thinking it. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, I I love. That that's what made this movie for me was King George the Third, uh, Lafay, uh, David, like David Dix, is that his name? Yeah, um, yep. yeah, and then Hercules, like all of the characters that were just sassy. Like, there's no other word for it. They were sassy. I loved them. They were really over the top characters. They were a lot of fun. Yep. So what was your ugly? And was it a good ugly or a bad ugly? It was a good ugly. Oh, good. Um, so my good ugly was the unsung hero of the entire play. The stage. Did you notice that the stage rotated? So they reproduced that in the production that we saw here in Anchorage. I loved that. Yes, touch. it was um, really great. Yes, it, it was like a character unto itself, and it made everything so much more visually interesting when, you know, characters were rotating around each other, that whole scene with the rewind, um, like, it just, it, there were, there was a time uh, when uh, Hamilton's wife was, like, coming around as, uh, uh, the sister Angelica. was leaving. like yeah, yeah. like yeah. just 
it it was so much more interesting to watch that than it would have been them walking that way. Yeah. Uh, when the Skylar sisters were introduced, they were walking and it was the, you know, the, the thing was going around. And so, you know, they were actually walking. It didn't just look like they were walking. So like it, it, it made the show. I love it. Like, and from what I read about it, it, um, it was initially like, it wasn't approved to do they were they were like no that's that's we're not going to do that and then they did a rehearsal with it and it was just like it it made it so much better that they were just like it's in you know and so i i always think that set design for stage plays is super interesting anyway because you have such a minimal amount of area to do something with and the things that they come up with are so clever with stage set design um i i have frequented the the local stage theater here um and like it, it's so crazy that you can just be in this like basically a, a tiny room i mean it's a very large room but you are telling an entire story that lasts through years and different locations and different weather and all these things. And they accomplish that with some plywood and lighting, you know, like, so I just, I love the stage. I think it's amazing. It was my good ugly. Well, I have to say on that note, they did a very creditable job with the production that came up here, reproducing that stage. Cool. Not, not just the rotating part of the stage, but also just all of the, the pieces that, that were there it was it was really quite nice good good yeah. i'm glad that they are able to keep that and i hope that that is something that they can do at every location because i hope so I too i don't think it would translate as well without that it it was like it would be like losing a character of the play i would imagine that they can do it at our theater they do it everywhere that they take the touring company yeah well, my ugly, so, of course, was also a good ugly. Good. And it was my favorite moment, which is Washington's retirement and when he sings one last time. And I'm sorry I don't have the actor's name right on the tip of my tongue because I just love him. He he was just, he inhabited Washington so, so well. And I just totally loved the way that he played that character. Chris Jackson. And thank you very much. I knew the last name was Jackson. I couldn't remember his first name. And we just saw exactly the same thing happen in our time. Yep. With, with Joe Biden stepping aside. Yep. For the good of the country. Yeah. So yeah. It, it brought a great deal of that feeling up when, when I watched it. That gratitude toward Joe Biden and it was really interesting the, the day that Biden announced that he was stepping aside. I'm on threads. I'm not on Twitter anymore. I dead name it. And, um, Me too. <laughs> and uh, someone actually quoted that song from Hamilton in oh, wow. reference to Joe Biden. And I was like, oh, ouch. But how appropriate. Yeah. Uh, so that's my ugly is is just that particular scene i really like that i kind of made that parallel too while watching it but it you know um that moment where he's like you know i i won't be running against him i am stepping down you know and hamilton's shock at that and it yeah um he did it like he did it for kind of a different reason um he is the reason why we only can serve two terms right no so actually it was after franklin delano roosevelt because roosevelt okay. actually died in his fourth term and okay. it was after roosevelt that term limits were were made a thing okay because um washington was only president for eight years so uh it's it's funny that it like kind of makes me wonder if it's like they looked at like 
kind of the useful life of a president, you know. <laughs> I, think I love he how King only... George. Oh, go ahead. I love how King George did point out where they were like, they're just going to like have somebody new all of the time. <laughs> I didn't realize I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think Washington was only 50 when he stepped aside, but that was quite old for those times, so. Yeah, I I feel like it was, but, like, so many of our founding fathers were kind of of that age. It was funny, I was watching a TikTok the other day where um, it was a stitch, and it started out, the girl's like, Nobody who signed the Declaration of Independence was older than 25. And the guy stitched it. He was like, there was nobody younger than 27 that signed it. Like most people were in their like, I think it was like late 30s to early 40s, you know. So like, it, it's funny that like, yeah, people usually did not live that long. Right. Um, certainly not to 97 like him. Like Eliza. Wife, but, right. Yeah. right. But um you know, like, I, I feel like the statistics on the lifespan of men back then may have been a little skewed because they were constantly shooting at each other. <laughs> their own stupid pride. Did I tell you on a totally separate but unrelated note that I went to Mount Vernon when Rob and I were back in D.C. this year? I think you mentioned it. It was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, I do want to do some East Coast traveling just because, um, like, that's where, like, the history of our country yes. is, you know, is, like, the East Coast. And I would also love to go antiquing over there. You should go to Gettysburg. You were saying that. Yeah. Gettysburg was very cool. Yeah. And, of course, me, being the weirdo that I am, would be like, I need to do a haunted tour. We missed our haunted tour because we got into Gettysburg kind of late and someone was oh. a little cranky. So, <laughs> but we stayed at a haunted inn that night. So. Do you have anything spooky happen? No, of course not. <laughs> ghosts were like, he is way too cranky. We're leaving him alone tonight. Totally. The ghosts were like, uh-uh, <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> No, thank you. We don't want to <laughs> die again. <laughs> Have you seen that guy? He's ginormous. <laughs> <laughs> I died violently in war and that guy would mess me up. <laughs> <laughs> well, so this takes us to notes and I don't have tons of notes, but I have a few. And the very first one is that we open up and we meet Aaron Burr who you and I know as Leslie Odom Jr., who was in Harriet, which we did for Real That's Housewives right. a while ago. That's quite right. A while that was ago. such a good movie. Yeah. And I just, I feel like we haven't mentioned Aaron Burr hardly at all, but Leslie Odom Jr. was great in that role. Yeah, he definitely was. Like, everyone was so great in their roles that, like, it, I think it would be hard for me to see it without them in it. I was actually a little worried about that when I saw the traveling production. I was a little yeah. scared that I wasn't going to enjoy it as much because I was so used to this cast. Yeah. I'm glad to report that I got over it quickly. <laughs> it is different in person. Like theater, theater so much better in person. But I have to say that I did enjoy this. Um, so because I loved King George the third so much in this, like he, like his cackling laughter, like I just, yes. any, like, of course, like, because I watched Hamilton videos on TikTok, like I get a ton and, and like, he, like I said, he's only got like four scenes, like, but I keep getting it over and over again. I watch the entire way through. <laughs> like I love it. Like, he he just looks unhinged. Like he's like his singing, he doesn't blink. He just And like, like the spittle. Like the every spittle. now and then there's like some spittle and it's like ugh, it's perfect for the character, but So he and Daniel Radcliffe and Daniel Radcliffe's wife 
are very, very good friends. Um, they, I think they are in a play together or were in a play together. Um, but he actually thanks him and Re Daniel Radcliffe and his wife in, and, and we're basically, he's basically like, you know, we're soulmates um, in his Tony Ward speech. And um, there is a hilarious interview. It looks like Daniel Radcliffe and his wife are interviewing Jonathan. Um, <laughs> they were they were saying, they were asking, how do you stay hydrated? And he, he kept saying, I get wet. And they were like, no, 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 stop. Like, how do you stay high? And they, they were basically asking about this fiddle that he gets. Oh, how funny. On stage. And he was trying to say that it's because he hydrates so much, but he kept saying that he was getting wet. And oh my God, that's hilarious. His, hysterical <laughs> it was it was pretty good yeah um so because i i loved the character so much in this um i i did a little research on king george the third um one of the longest serving monarchs he was um he served for 60 years uh the last 10 years of his reign his son um king george the fourth took over because um and it actually makes me want to watch the movie, The Madness of King George. Oh, it's such a good movie. It's I know, such I a good movie. I, uh, oh. So apparently... Uh, he had Porphyria. He, Porphyria, yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, which, isn't that the, the disease they kind of call vampirism or whatever? So it's a really it's interesting... It's a blood disease. It is a blood disease. It's a, it's a disorder of heme... Red blood cell proteins. <laughs> right. Um, it has a very, very, very broad range of manifestations. I, mm -hmm. I actually have a friend who died because she ended up having liver failure from having porphyria. Um, but until she developed liver failure, her symptoms were very mild. <laughs> you can have the other extreme, which is someone like King George who's crazy from it. Mm-hmm. Um, so because all of my knowledge comes from TV, um, there's a great episode, <laughs> there's a great episode of CSI. Um, I thought you were going to say house, but. <laughs> well, and what's funny is it has one, the, the lady who has Porphyria is in house. She's a main character in house. Oh, how funny. Her name right now. Um, she, she's in, uh, Rosalia and Isles too. She plays Isles. Uh, anyway, so, uh she has perforia and she's killing people because like there's like proteins in certain organs that like help save off the symptoms of perforia. Um, and the way that she's killing people is um, an attack dog because like, you know, bullets would contaminate the blood and like there, she has, she has all kinds of reasons like why she's like training her dogs to attack people to kill them so she can eat their organs because she doesn't want to die of Proforia, and it's probably because she's crazy from the Proforia. Nice. So, yeah. So, um, yeah. So he had Proforia, and uh, so he he deteriorated in into his symptoms, you know, towards the end. But before that, like, of course, as Americans, we see him as like the oppressor from overseas, you know, right. Because, we we no longer wanted to be ruled by a monarchy um he actually was a pretty good guy um so apparently a woman tried to stab him um tried to assassinate him and uh he had so much sympathy for her that instead of having her arrested he had her committed to a hospital um which i mean at hospitals for the criminally insane were probably not great, but it was probably a little better than prison, I would imagine. But I, he he had sympathy for her. Like, it wasn't like, oh my God, she tried to kill me off with her head. So he had sympathy. Um, he also would bathe in his kitchen so that his servants wouldn't have to bring hot water to a different building. And then of course, you know, dispose of the water after that. So like he had sympathy for his servants in that like, I can bathe in the kitchen, you know? Um, and then he was a devoted father of 15. Good Lord. 
He loved to read. And after his death, uh, out of his personal library, 65,000 books were donated to the British wow. library. That's really um, cool. Yes. He was into astronomy and he funded the two, the astronomist, astronomist and his wife. Astronomer. The, astronomer. Thank you. Jeez. It's late. It's, it's almost 10 o'clock here. Um, he, he funded them um, and they went on to uh, discover the planet Uranus. Oh. Yeah. Very cool. And, insert childish joke about Uranus. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say a thing. <laughs> I was writing it. I was like, should I put a joke in there? <laughs> <laughs> about king george finding your ass yeah, I but well yeah. i highly oh. recommend the madness of king george it is totally worth watching in fact maybe we should podcast that and maybe maybe well, i'll have to see what platform it's streaming on i just yeah. uh i i went through and ruthlessly cut some of my streaming services uh -huh. yeah i probably need to do the same thing as i never use them because i exactly. don't watch tv here exactly i was like so... i don't watch discovery plus i don't watch paramount Plus. like i probably i probably got it and was like oh, i'll cancel it next month because i'm just watching this one thing on it and right never canceled it and so like i took a day the other day and went through and canceled a bunch of stuff so I'll have to see where it's streaming. But yeah, um, that is all the notes that I got. Well, I've got a little bit more than that. So <laughs> I did want to comment on the Skylar sisters. So the lyric that Angelica sings where she says, when I meet Thomas Jefferson, I must compel him to include women in the sequel. <laughs> She's talking about the Declaration of Independence. I uh -huh. thought that was very timely, considering everything yes. we are going through as American women right now. Right. Um, this movie, this musical still made me, gave me chills. It still made me cry. Uh, um, what scene specifically? Like definitely... When Philip dies and then when Eliza is singing about Hamilton after his death. And just hearing the opening strains of the music, you know, just gives yeah. me chills. Let's see, what else it's do funny. I have? I had a tough time when um, <clears throat> the Reynolds pamphlet was released. Like, I just, I think of, like... I don't know if you've ever watched The Good Wife. Uh -uh. Um, so it, they they make the parallel of um, a bunch of politicians and like specifically Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton. Um, they make the parallels of like the the man standing up behind a podium with a bunch of reporters and he's admitting to his affair and blah, blah, blah. And of course, his wife is just standing there, you know, like, oh, like holding their hands, standing by their man, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And I was just like, nothing ever changes, does it? Like, she had she had to stand by your man, even though like, and I, he like, he willingly published this pamphlet yes. to save his his reputation but in turn it ruined the family yeah no i agree it was that was a difficult thing to swallow yeah that was the sad part for me like not when anyone dies like i was just like oh people are so selfish well i think he probably had to be selfish to be <clears throat> the person that he was i mean he was brilliant yeah he was brilliant and he was probably like, a bit of a narcissist. I feel like if anybody kind of had the right to, like he was orf he was a bastard and he was orphaned at a young age. And, you know, he he was supposed to die poor in the streets. And, you know, he he fought for everything that he got and he worked very, very hard for it. And, you know, like 
I, I feel like that gives you some bragging rights, but you know, I just, it, it's always hard that, you know, nobody's perfect. Anyway. He definitely was not. <laughs> um, I found it interesting. I, I learned that Angelica was actually married when she met Hamilton. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. I learned that when I was watching that interview and they talked that, to that historian who was part of the interview. Um. I heard, so there's, there's conflicting information about the Schuyler family. Um, there is a line in the beginning of the movie that talks about how um, Angelica, they, they don't have any brothers, um, which wasn't true. Uh, oh, interesting. There were, there were 15 children, eight of whom survived to adulthood. Um, there were five Skylar sisters and there were three Skylar brothers and um, there is conflicting reports about why um, Angelica didn't marry Hamilton uh, and the one thing that like one of the things that I saw was because she was the oldest female and had no brothers uh, she was expected to marry wealthy and Hamilton wasn't wealthy. Uh, so, like, there's just some weird conflicting reports out there about Angelica and her marriage. Um, but apparently the guy she married, um, his name wasn't really his name. He was kind of on the run from creditors back in England. Oh, God. And he became basically a, a arms dealer in the United States. And he made a ton of money from there. Um, so, yeah. Well, according to that historian, she was married when she met Hamilton. So, huh. and, and um, they talked a little bit about how Lin-Manuel Miranda played a little bit loose with some of the historical facts for artistic interest, basically. Yeah, I mean, you kind of have to because oh, yeah. they, were, they weren't in the room where it happened. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a weird fact was um, John Church, who was, um, oh my God, I just blanked on her name. Eliza's Angelica? Sister. Angelica. I almost said Erica. Um, the, the man that she married, John Church, quote unquote John Church, uh, being an arms dealer, actually, uh, uh, weird fact, John Church dueled Aaron Burr five years before his brother-in-law, Alexander Hamilton, and lost his life. Oh, my gosh. But, yeah. So Burr shot um, Angelica's husband and killed him, and then shot Eliza's husband and killed him. Wow. Wow. Uh, Church also supplied Alexander and his son, Philip, the guns they would use in their own ill-fated duels. Oh, wow. It's so, that's one of the things, that, the historical thing, it's so interesting. I mean, I, all of these people ran in the same circles. So, like, you know, like the whole fact about it was Alexander Hamilton Jr. who what, did the divorce for Aaron Burr's wife. You know, like, th there are so much base like non-sexual incest there's some sexual incest too but like like everybody was involved in everybody else's life it is the greatest soap opera i love it <laughs> um anything else you want to say um after hamilton's death eliza found herself the single mother of seven children some very troubled Philip's death deeply affected Angelica, the couple's eldest daughter, so um, named after her aunt, I guess. She suffered a mental breakdown and stopped speaking to anyone except the ghost of her older brother. She oh, wow. remained only intermittently lucid throughout her life, according to 
um, Chernow, the author of the source material. Oh, how interesting. So, their all of their lives were just so interesting. Yeah. So, I really am going to have to get through that Chernow book. <laughs> I need to purchase it with like my six built up credits on Audible. <laughs> and then make it through a book before I start that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Well, I don't think I have anything else to say. Except, Me oh my God, the sound held up. Knock on wood. It did. And we tried to keep it at an hour. We're at an hour 30. So good for us. But we, we podcasted. So score one for us. <laughs> and we'll be back in about a month, probably a little less. And uh, not we'll sure what we'll be something. talking about next. Yeah. Yep. We have to do it before Rob and I leave for Belize. <gasps> so jealous. I'm going to Belize. I'll let Everyone you know how it that. is. It'll be pretty e cool. Everyone needs that. Sam's the husband. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, until next time, everybody just remember... <laughs> <laughs> take it one dead day in the time <laughs> we are the weirdos mister that's right we are the weirdos mister we forgot yeah. that <laughs> yeah all right everybody until next time bye bye